Glad to be joined today by the longest reigning Ring of Honor Women's Champion, Athena. Welcome to Under the Ring Pro Wrestling Conversation. So glad you're here with me today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> your, your background is much more festive than mine with the tree and the championship uh, title belt and the hat and everything Ooh. like that. So We're trying. We're trying yeah. today. I'm redoing my whole room in here. So it's actually just bare past the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> All that matters is what's in this little box. Right here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So let, let's start with what you've got coming up Friday, December 15th, uh, exclusively on Honor Club Final Battle. You'll be defending the ROH Women's Championship against Billy Starks, uh, someone who's been an ally of yours uh, for some time. Uh, what are your thoughts heading into that match with her? Um, chaos has ensued, I feel like. Um, I feel like I've given Billy the world and she's just not grateful. She's that rebellious teenager that doesn't understand this is how real life works. She's still in that, hey, I'm an adult. It's sunshine, rainbows, happiness, that type of thing. And I'm sitting here like, no, this is the real world. This is how this happens. You know, she is turned on me and going into final battle in my hometown, it's not about me reclaiming my championship. It's about me teaching Billy a lesson that she rightfully deserves. And Billy Starks is still so young. And, and you know, when you, when you look at where she's at already in the wrestling business, she just turned 19. What's it like getting in the ring with someone like that and working with someone like that? And how far along is she as a wrestler at 19? I mean, it's crazy when you look at everything that she's done, making list after list after list, not just for the women, but for the men when it comes to PWI. She's probably one of the hottest young talent around the world right now. Everyone is looking at what Billy Starks is going to do next. So I can't discredit any of that, but I actually know exactly who I'm dealing with. It's someone that has started when they were 18 years old, fresh out of high school, in college. I have done this entire thing that Billy has done. Billy thinks that she is unique. She thinks she is special. No, plenty of us have done this journey. You know, I just did it better. And I was going to bring that up too. Looking up at your, looking up your career, you started around the same age. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I think Billy probably started <laughs> training ridiculously early on. It's the same. Don't yeah. give her more credit. <laughs> well, you know, you, you started around, around 18, 18, 19 years old. How different is the game now uh, from when you started? I feel like things were a lot tougher when I was growing up in the wrestling business. You know, I was trained by Skandar Akbar, Booker T, Rodney Mack, Jazz. Like, I have a wrestling pedigree of trainers. But to get that knowledge, you had to travel around where I feel like now it's readily available. But not only that, like, I grew up in a old school era, and now it has transitioned to what it is now with PC culture, with post-COVID stuff. Like, the the whole business as a whole has changed. You know, I was around when uh, the Von Ericks were still kicking people in the face and be like, you want to be a wrestler? That type of thing you know so it definitely has changed a bit but with that i have gained toughness i have gained aggression on a level that none of these other women even know about and i think that's the main difference when it comes to me and billy start is the type of experience that we've learned sure she's been doing this for four years i've do been doing this for almost uh 19 at this point in time so i mean i do have a learning curve but i also have a wealth of knowledge where she's just now getting started and even the number of opportunities for women when you were breaking into wrestling also was a completely different landscape. And honestly, to be honest, you were part of the change. You were part of what, you know, got women's wrestling to where it needed to be. You were having the matches that people were talking about. That's probably inspiring the group that's coming in now. So um, it, 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 is that satisfying to know that you're a part of that change? It's wild. I think for so long in my career, in my wrestling career, just in general, like I wanted to be a part of something. I wanted to watch something grow and I wanted to be influential in that. You know, when we first started, the women's wrestlers at the time were getting like two minutes or they were wrestling in gravy. No right. knock on them. That's just what the climate of wrestling was at that time. And then Shimmer Women came around, uh, Women Superstars Uncensored, WSU came around, Ben Fatal came around, all these female shows, all women's shows, even had Women of Honor at that time that were trying to show that women could be more and they did. And it finally transformed Translated to TV when you got uh, Emma versus Paige or now Soraya and they started this revolution that we had been fighting for for so long and then that translated into the evolution of what women's wrestling is just across the board and it's a beautiful thing to not only see just myself in Ring of Honor or AEW women's division the Impact Knockouts division um, the WWE women's division when you look at 
women's wrestling as a whole has, has gotten so much better and so amazing. And there's so many superstars there. But for me personally, like I wanted to make history. I wanted that trivia question to be about me. And it has been in the past. It will be in the future. And for sure, it's going to be a ring of honor now since I am the forever longest reigning women's world champion um, in the company. And to main event to uh, premium events or pay-per-view events back to back, like that just solidifies what I'm doing is making history. And I'm bringing everyone along for the ride with me. You mentioned him before, but the name that stood out to me in researching you, and I, I knew this from, you know, just knowing about your career too, was Skandor Akbar. Uh, for those who don't know, Akbar wrestled in the 60s and 70s, was probably best known to fans in the 80s as General Skandor Akbar, the leader of Devastation Incorporated. What's it like to pick that guy's brain? Because it seems like it's such a different generation. Um, It, it was, uh, God rest his soul. Um. He never got to see me make it to TV, which is wild, but like just he was hard and he was tough and he was gruff, but he also had this like softness to him that I feel like very few people uh, or his close friends and close students got to know about him. Um, but I just remember he was so tough and he was so adamant that I didn't train like a woman, that I didn't, that I was going to be special because he also trained Miss Jacqueline. He also uh, was influential in JBL and uh, according to him, Mean Mark's career, if you guys know who that is. So it was very important to him that I showed that aggression, that I didn't wrestle like a woman, that I didn't wrestle like what was on TV. And I think that that is uh, at that time when I was a kid anyway, that I was different that I could wrestle and do everything that the guys did but he instilled in my brain that like it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman you're a pro wrestler and pro wrestling is the game like be aggressive be the bad guy be the good guy be whoever you want to be but don't be limited to gender don't be limited to race and like Ak was really adamant about those type of things which I feel like has definitely like been ingrained in my brain to this day like I feel like I'm the last of the real pro wrestlers, if you will, <laughs> when it comes to that type of aspect um, of that old school mentality. And it's really amazing to just kind of sit back and kind of think about all the things, him stealing my food in the middle of training because he thought it was too unhealthy. He was just hungry. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's really cool to just come this entire way and just kind of reminisce about like all those teachings that are still there to this day that, you know, it's like, do every match like it's your last. And that's just something that I don't know that I appreciate a lot more the longer I've been in pro wrestling, that I try to help out with the younger generation, that I help out with my students at home. Um, it's just, you can do anything. And the beauty of this business is that it constantly changes. It constantly evolves. So there's, you're never going to learn everything. You're never going to know everything. But like it's it's the quest of all that knowledge that like never stop learning, never be content. And I think that that's what drives me to this day. I feel like the style constantly changes. The moves constantly change. The format of the shows change. But the basics are always the basic lessons are always kind of the same. So that's why you being trained by Akbar, like Rob Van Dam being trained by the Sheik, people will probably look at that and be like, I don't see that at all. What, what you know? What did that person teach them? But it's like, you know, you're a student of the game too. Had you ever gotten a chance to watch some uh, some classic uh, act? Have ever... I have, um, and I feel like I've experienced more than what I've watched. Wow. <laughs> he had that little the the whip that they get the horses in. He would the just riding like, crop yeah. smack people in the calves with it. I just remember we did a drill wrong and that'd be the back of your calf and you would never do that drill wrong ever again because you'd be hanging out with ringside <laughs> Wow! with the cattle whip just like better be good better be good but like those are things that I love um, about it because it was a different style of training but I think without it I wouldn't be the same person I am today. Who are some of the other people who might be uh, who might have been influential on your career? Um, There were definitely a ton like I mean I was very fortunate to be in Texas at the time of like the hotbed of training. Um, Action Jackson was someone I trained with frequently, though I know a lot of people don't really know him, uh, but he's a Texas legend. Um, Booker T was someone that I had gone down, I had wrestled with, and I used to go and train with him. I used to drive six hours from uh, the place I lived at in uh, North Texas all the way down there 
twice a week just to go train and get that knowledge. And he's part of the reason I do the uh, O face or formerly known as the Eclipse off the top rope. He taught me that, you know, hey girl, you're five one. You can't be like power lifting people. You know, I trained with Lance Hoyt or Vance Archer, uh, the murder hawk, if you will, for quite some time, Monty Brown. And then I traveled like all around the world just trying to get knowledge, like, or the US anyway. I went to Mexico to train. I, I just went everywhere I possibly could. So like I try to consider myself well-versed in every genre, at least a little here, a little there, like an all around pro wrestler, uh, because like that has, um, I guess molded me a lot more as being as versatile as I am, uh, because not every op opponent's the same. You can't do the same things. Um, so it's always like me pulling out a bag of tricks. I'm like, Oh, what's next? Oh, what's next out of this hat or going back and watching film of stuff I used to do back in the day. I'm like, Oh crap. I used to do that. Yeah. We got to bring that back. You know? So it's, it's constantly a rotating uh, move set, but it's because I had so many people in my life, in my career at that time that took the time to try to help to, that took the time that saw something special in me when I didn't see anything special in myself at the time. And they just tried to, I don't know, guide me in the right direction, which, you know, it all worked out. <laughs> And you mentioned that, that versatility that you have too. You know, you look at your run as Ring of Honor Women's Champion. You're essentially the face of Ring of Honor. Um, you've wrestled such a wide variety of challengers in that mm -hmm. time too, and all those experiences that the, uh, experiences that you have can only help in dealing with a wide variety of styles, but also a wide variety of experiences that you face too. Because you're you're wrestling in some of these proving ground matches. It's people that are not necessarily under contract trying to get a shot and you're both trying to look good. You're both trying to do the best you can in the time that you're allotted. So, you know, does it give you pride to have wrestled that wide variety of challengers that you've seen? Um, like I look at this just past year of my career and I think someone said I wrestled 40 something matches this year, like un undefeated in most of them, probably more than 40. It's probably close to 50. Um, but like when you look at my last year, when you look at the variety of talent that I've wrestled from the, uh, enhancement talent that AEW slash ROH brings in all the way up to the talented women that we have here. Not saying those porcelain hussies ain't talented. I'm just saying y'all are a little bit easier to break than the ones that I work with on a regular basis. Um, but when you look at just the wide variety from Yu Yamashita to Yuka Sakazaki to Emi Sakura, all the way to Kira Hogan, Layla Hirsch, um, a lot of these women have such different movesets, such a variety of style. And I've been thankful that not only have I overcome each and every one of those challenges that have been set before me, I've thrived and not only showcased myself and I've made them up their game as well. So it's become one of those things that like, you know, out of all those matches, like I considering their consider them stepping stones on my path, if that makes sense. Maybe that's not the right way to use it because they've elevated me on my staircase to happiness and freedom and glory and history making performances. But, you know, they've made me want to be a better performer. Uh, Willow Nightingale, which is another one that is definitely made me elevate my game more than most would even assume um, because no one will ever come that close to being me ever again. But, you know, these women, they work hard. We all work hard day in, day out. I'm just better than all of them. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned a number of international names there too. And, and AEW and Ring of Honor, I guess, you know, have all of these different partnerships. The, you know, the, they've actually <laughs> have the forbidden door kind of trademark now. It's actually a, a show that they do every year. Does that, does that excite you to kind of see some of the opportunities that you might be able to have, uh, with some of these crossover matches and some of these different styles and some of these different places to go. Yeah, absolutely. Who wouldn't, who wouldn't want more like, you know, universally known talent, right? Like Julia from stardom, Mercedes Monet, Trinity. There's so many, uh, beautiful, talented women out there that like I've been dying to get my hands on. Um, including those that work in the company now, like a Jamie Hayter. It's really cool what AEW and ROH have done with bringing in that outside talent. Like Ronda Rousey was here a few weeks ago. Uh, you know, so it's really cool to have the opportunity not to be limited to just the roster at times. It's really cool. Like I got to wrestle Angelina Love, um, who I was a massive fan of 
uh, when I was growing up as a kid, before I even started wrestling, uh, there used to be this show on the Sun Network that had a small 20 minute women's wrestling show. And, you know, that was the first time I saw her and Velvet Sky before they even became knockouts. And I didn't even know that women could wrestle like that. So it was really eye opening to be able to see these women perform and to be able to come down this road and like have these women in the ring with me at the peak of my career. Like it's awesome. And I cannot, um, I cannot think like the environment that I'm in enough for that moment and those opportunities to have these stream matches. Like the next on the list is hopefully I get to go to Japan and wrestle because I've never gotten to do that. Um, but, you know, with all of the Japanese superstars with Riho coming back and um, just a plethora of them like dying to come over here, like the opportunity is always there for those crazy dream matches. Well, it's been a real pleasure to watch this whole run and, and just see all the different matches that you've had. In in this world of content at times, some have dubbed ROH kind of a best kept secret when it's at its best. Where where does this run kind of fit for you within the context of your career? And and what is this ROH to you? Um, so when I first started wrestling, like Ring of Honor was like one of those places you had to be if you were somebody on the independent scene. Um, there were a lot of lower level indies at the time that had a lot of buzz, but like Ring of Honor was the epitome of like, hey, if you're not in WWE, you got to be in Ring of Honor. If you weren't in TNA or Impact at that time, you had to be in Ring of Honor. So it took a lot of pride for me when I was in Ring of Honor. I was used as a normal talent there uh, back in the Indies, I think 2010-ish, somewhere in that range, on and off. And to come back full circle, to have Tony Khan uh, revisit this whole brand, to purchase this brand, it's, it's pretty wild because it means something to me personally, because I worked so hard to get there the first time. Now I'm at the forefront of the division and now I'm making everyone work just as hard just to be on my level. Like, yes, I am the gatekeeper. I say it for a reason because I want people to take pride in their work, take pride in what they do. Whether you win or lose, like we're doing what we love every single step of the day. It doesn't matter if your match is two minutes because you suck or 20 minutes because you put up a good fight. You know, take pride in what you do because every time I step into Ring of Honor, like like I had it in my hair for a bit, but we're about to change because so I'm doing something crazy for the pay-per-view this weekend. Um, but like, I just want everyone to take pride in what I do. I put my heart, my soul, my blood, my tears, like literally blood because I have a fractured nose. Um, and like, it, it's wild. Like I've done all of this stuff. I've wrestled with a dislocated knee, a torn out shoulder. I've re- uh, irritated my Achilles injury and like all this stuff is stuff I keep under wraps because it's irrelevant because as long as I'm able to go and do what I have to do to entertain if one person says man Athena is killing it I've done my job as far as entertainment goes I shoot and aim for higher than the sun but like this is my brand this is my show and I want people to take pride in it like I do sure mm -hmm. people might say it's a best kept secret but every week I trend every week people are talking about what we're doing in Ring of Honor so something we're doing is working something we're doing is clicking and I just want to keep forward with that moment momentum keep pushing forward with that momentum and show the world like it doesn't matter where you are as long as you care about what you do as long as you love every single second of being in that ring and showcasing yourself while entertaining the masses that's all that matters and you were somebody too and when they were still doing dark and dark elevation it, no matter what opportunity you're given with that screen time, you're maximizing it. And it's a chance to improve and a chance to try things and a chance to get eyes on you. So it doesn't really matter necessarily if it's Honor Club or if it's TNT. Like, you got to make the most of the time that you, that you have, right? I mean... Absolutely. I remember a time where I just went to work and I sat in catering for months on end, you know, and I just was like, oh, if I could just get the dark match. Oh, if I could just be on main event. Oh, if I could just be on superstars. Like that's all I needed because I was confident that once I stepped in that ring, I was going to make it magic. I was going to force it if it wasn't organic. But like that's the type of things that people, when they're looking to get a job at AEW, when they're looking to get a job at Ring of Honor, that's what they need to be looking at is how can I make the best with the time that I've been given? How can I make the best of what I have? Because sometimes you get, you do the best with what you got, right? But taking advantage of that, not being content, like that's what this is all about, about pushing forward, making yourself memorable. And that's pretty much every time I step in the ring, I want people to say, wow, Athena is really putting it out on the line for us. 
what are your long-term goals in wrestling now and have they changed with where you've been and where you've ended up in your career? I think the next step for me would definitely be to take a crack at AEW TV again. Uh, my first time around was not great. Uh, and I lost to the uh, all powerful Jay Cargill. Um, I think now with, you know, me being the forever ROH women's champion, I want to be a triple crown champion by the end of 2024. I'm going after all of the belts, the TBS championship, Julia Hart, the uh, AEW women's championship, Tony Storm. Like I'm not content with just beating up these fragile broads left and right. Like this is your warning. I am coming for you guys in 2024. It doesn't matter what anyone says. You got an X on your back and it's only a matter of time before we get there. You're one of the highest level women's wrestlers around. To you, who are, who are some of your greatest of all times? Uh, oh, that's so difficult. Um, that's why I said one of, some of, because I know if you had a name like one or two, it's it's hard. Yeah, to Yeah, because like, especially being in the business, you can't have like The Rock without Stone Cold, right? Like, and that's kind of the mentality I have to take with it is that like, I have a favorite genre of wrestling, which was like kind of the post attitude era stuff. Um, I was immensely thrilled with uh, WCW's cruiserweight division, uh, like just basically obsessed with it. I mean, who wasn't at the time? It was, it was absolutely phenomenal and it was groundbreaking. Um, I love Lucha. I love, like, I, I feel like I can't say people because like, it's, it's just so much that goes into what we do. Like I can talk about Eddie Guerrero. I can talk about Y2J. I can talk about Rey Mysterio. I could, I could go and talk about how awesome Hurricane Helms was. Cause he was one of my favorites. Cause I was a super big nerd though. Like I never tell him in person. I pretend like I never say this on air ever. Like I love Steph. Stephanie McMahon, like it, it, there's so many wrestlers that were out there in the world. Like even like Crash Holly, loved Crash Holly, but I love them all for different reasons. I loved Rosie. I like for me to sit here and say like to limit it to just a few yeah. wrestlers. Like I just love pro wrestling. I think that's the best thing I can say. I love pro wrestling. Like uh, Curry Man was one of my favorites. Like as it, like just like I was like so fascinated with Curry Man, Takamichi Noku, uh, Yoshino, uh, Naruki Doi, uh, Kenta. Like uh, like for me to just limit this to like a few names is not worthy of like what my actual fandom is because yeah. it's so wide and so ridiculous that some people are like, how, how are you the wrestler that you are? Because you like this hokey comedy stuff. You love the hard hitting stuff. And I'm just like, I just like pro wrestling. And that's basically yeah. it. Like we all kind of, um, or at least for the most part, like we all grew up as fans in some form or fashion. It doesn't matter when we started, we ended up here. And that's kind of the way I like to look at it. <laughs> It also kind of depends on what time you're watching it in, too, because wrestling is all about that. But I, I think you did just pretty much populate the most diverse and interesting battle royal I can possibly think of with some of the I names mean, you threw out there. And we, and we can't forget about, like, Tajiri, William Regal, Johnny Saint, Robbie Brookside, you know, any – the world of sport guys with Mike Bennett, that – the world of sport, Mike Bennett. I love this Mike Bennett, but world of sport, Mike Bennett. Like, I just love pro wrestling. Hell, we could even go back to the good old 1960s trampoline days that you can find on YouTube. That's just ridiculously fun of French uh, pro wrestling. Like, it's just a John. It, it's all pro wrestling at the end of the day. And it's all fun. And it's all for entertainment. Absolutely. Um, in your time as Ember Moon in WWE and NXT, how did you grow as a performer in that time? I, What'd you learn I about yourself? I learned, I learned a lot about myself. Um, I learned a lot about what I wanted, like, and where I want it to be in my career. I think, like, the most awesome part is that about, like, being in NXT was working with Hunter, with working with all the amazing coaches like Sarah Amato, uh, Robbie Brookside, who I love to death. I cannot say enough great things about Robbie Brookside that brought out that aggression uh, within the Ember Moon character, Norman Smiley, Matt Bloom, uh, Fit Finley. Like there were just so much knowledge in one place in like Shawn Michaels too, like Scotty Too Hotty was there. Like there was just so much knowledge wrapped up in one place that like, it was like a, like, college for wrestling i i don't know if that's like an accurate term it was like pro wrestling you and it was like really cool to just be able to go there and just learn so much and i and i like to this day i just want to like 
I still talk to some of these guys too. And I'm like, I just need to learn. I just need more. I just need more. Did you see this? Did you give me some feedback? You know, and it's, and it's really cool. Even Alice in Danger, because I have to give a massive shout out to her who watches all my matches to this day and tells me like things that I could do, or she'll send me some devastating clip that she's from like 1920 something. And she's like, you should do this and, and kill an extra with this, you know? And, it, and it's just really cool to have that support still, even though I'm not there. Yeah. Um, but like, I just learned a lot about myself and what I wanted out of my career there. And I learned like how to work for television, how to work for myself. Like it made me more motivated ever than before just to be good at what I do. And I think that's the beauty of that place. I think one of the things that's really the beauty of pro wrestling too, is that the support of wrestlers for each other crosses over companies. Everyone likes to think that everyone's always at each other's throats all the time because everybody's competing for whatever they're competing for. But that's all I hear all the time is like, oh, you know, it's, I'm not in the same per company as this person anymore, but they're still telling me what they like about my match and, and, and that kind of stuff. So it, it, that, that's got to be pretty cool to, to be in an industry where that, that can happen. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, it's, it's awesome just to uh, be able to catch up with people. I think that's the one thing that I miss a lot is the people I used to share locker rooms with that I used to travel the road with, you know, it's, it's one of those things that like you just sit back and it's like, yeah, I want to be better than you. I'm going to be better than you. And it's a healthy sense of competition, but at the same time, we're happy for each other because at the end of the day, when we go home, when this is all done, when we're sitting at the nursing home, it's like we have those memories that we can reminisce with each other. Like, hey, girl, you remember that one time you almost flipped that SUV on the road because you cut that corner too quick and this person knows who you are. So I hope you hear this. It was the wildest like midnight travel trip I've ever had in my life. <laughs> but like it, it's, it's great to sit back and just know that I made so many friendships amongst my time there and know that they've continued on. So we're going to move on to something we call the three count now. It's going to be three quick questions and your answers. Um, first question, what does this version of Athena do better than any other version of Athena or Ember Moon? Must see violence in an unfiltered moveset. Very nice. <laughs> Second question, aside from yourself, who is your favorite Athena? Favorite Athena? What? <laughs> Anyone else named Athena? Any other um, uh, there, characters? I, I will say this. I think there is a K-pop band named Athena. Um, and they were pretty, like, they had the song named, uh, named Snap, and it popped up one day, and it just immediately went into my playlist. Um, also, Greek goddess Athena, you yeah. know, who I'm named after. Goddess of victory and war. Woo! <laughs> I mean, these are these are going to be light and easy questions, so there are no right or wrong answers anyway. So even if they're, they're bad all questions, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all my answers are wrong. <laughs> and then uh, final question, aside from, of course, AEW fight forever, which would, of course, be the natural answer to an interview set up by AEW. What's the best wrestling video game of all time and why? Um, That's that's difficult because I'm a video gamer. Um, yeah. For me personally, because I have so many fond memories of it, AEW Fight Forever is absolutely awesome. You should totally go get that right now. But my favorite video game, uh, wrestling video game of all time was WCW versus NWO, no mercy, I'm sorry, uh, Revenge. WCW oh. versus NWO Revenge. That is my favorite wrestling game just because every Christmas me and my cousins would pile around the N64 four controllers. Me and my brother and my two cousins, we would play just in the battle royal mode. I never figured out how to actually pro wrestle so I used to just reach over the barricade and grab stuff. So they would always have to make it no DQ for me. Um, but one of the skins in the game, like once you beat the game was an Ultimo Dragon skin that was pink. And they just talked me into thinking it was a girl. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I always wrestled as Ultimo Dragon, but he's just honestly just one of the coolest people uh, I've ever had the fortune of meeting in person and getting to see wrestle. So very nice. Well, Athena, thank you so much for joining me today in Under the Ring Pro Wrestling Conversations, Ring of Honor World Women's Championship on Honor Club, February, uh, Friday, December 15th. Let me read my own uh, notes here correctly against Billy Starks. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining me and uh, all the best to you for everything you're doing. Really, really digging uh, everything about your run. No, thank you, Phil. <laughs> all right. Thank you.